one of the hardest things about overcoming the scapegoat role is that we have to work through some pretty heavy duty stuff, some abuse experienced early on, those traumatic experiences, and it can feel so overwhelming that at times we can feel as if we're going to die. At times I felt like I was going to die. This video is how I have worked through some of that stuff, and I'm still working through some of that stuff, how I counteract the level of overwhelm and not have to feel like I'm going to die. My name is Mark. This is The Emotional Alchemist. One of the easiest things I found to work through this stuff is to have a self-care plan, especially one that helps me balance out um, my left and my right brain, the analytical part and that feeling overwhelmed side of my brain. There's a link in the description below to a PDF that I use with fun exercises, just fun stuff that I do to balance out to my left and my right brain. If you want that, it's free. Click the link and it will be taken straight there. For me, working through all of this really heavy duty stuff is super difficult and uh, has been. It just feels like wading through tar, which is kind of hiding kryptonite underneath. And when that stuff, so when I start looking at the stuff that went on back then, those th experiences I had as a kid that affect my self-esteem today and affect how I turn up in the world. My fear of visibility comes from messages I learned early on and run as a program that's still going on in the back of my brain that I can't always see. For me, when I say looking at the baggage of the past, that it's the stuff that happened which kind of became my core belief. So part of my core belief was that I needed to hide from life and that I should try to keep the peace in any situation. I saw recently that um, an article that said there, there's another, you know, when it says uh, in response to trauma, fight, flight, um, freeze, or fawn. Fawn is uh, the idea that when conflict comes up, many of us do whatever we can in order to be able to make sure that everybody is taken care of and to stop the conflict. And so often that's done at the expense of me and my needs and working through the early stuff. Why do I do that? This is what I call the shadow work. It's why do I avoid conflict? Why have I avoided conflict? Some of it, became, it, in my life, it became to a point where I had conflict the whole time. I think this is because the universe or God or whatever it is needed me to be able to look at why I would avoid conflict. It, but, and that's the hardest thing. I look at this as if it's a box full of trauma because it's uh, what really, that overwhelm comes when I look at it as a box with a lid and it really depends on how fast I open that trauma box and how fast and how wide it is. So if it's like, because the reason I think that so many of us come to learn the pain and the trauma and the abuse we experienced, we come to learn it really slowly is because if we were to look at it all at once, kind of, that's Pandora's box. It's like, you know, that the, the old uh, myth that the um, you open Pandora's box and you see all of the sorrows of the world at the same time, and it's just so overwhelming. I think for many of us, and I get, I'm so lucky because I get to speak to so many of us who are working through this stuff, who are trying to escape the um, escape the scapegoat role but it's so easy to become overwhelmed when looking at this stuff what really matters is how fast and how wide the box opens if i feel that overwhelm and this is essential this is like as we become aware of all that stuff that's going on can i learn to have an automatic response which is to be aware of the trauma and the triggers and the overwhelm because if I can become aware of when there is all of that emotional stuff going on and if I can instead of because I don't know if you're like me I can sometimes work and then this um, if it becomes overwhelming think that the answer is to work harder 
and get it done faster or whatever it is in life when actually what I need to do is step back or slow down or do something nurturing so that the overwhelm is lessened. If I can use certain triggers, emotions, that if there's a tenseness in my body, if um, emotionally I feel overwhelmed and I can say, okay, I could keep working now. I could keep looking at that dark stuff or whatever it is. But what I can do instead is some sort of self-care. I have a list of actions that, um, that I do which balance the left and the right brain. It works really well. Some of it's so simple. It's literally like doing this. I don't know why it works, but it does. Um, and uh, there's something called a thymus thump. It's oh, it's a funny, weird thing. But actually, it is a thing. If you look it up, for some reason, it unblocks spiritually. It's well known in kinesiology. Anyway, I have a list of all that stuff. Some of it's much more fun than that. But it's when the overwhelm comes up, my natural reaction can be some sort of self-punishment, some sort of kind of work harder, it's that message which is running in the background that says you don't deserve, you'll never deserve, you need to boom, boom, boom. When actually what I need to do is breathe into it because I, especially with work, I find that sometimes the slower I go, the more I get stuff done because that feeling of overwhelm, the tenseness in the body, yeah, it's great sometimes to get some stuff done, but often it's going to slow us down because of productivity or whatever. That's to do with work. But um, and when looking at all of the, the hard emotional stuff, it's the same. If overwhelm is just means that, that a chunk of that stuff has been too big to work through at once, and the answer is simple. Just knock a bit of the chunk off with some self-care. That. I think self-care is the answer to so much of this stuff. And for me, it can be anything. You know, uh, go for a walk, find a dog somewhere, or um, uh, have a bath, or make herbal teas, or there's finding what it is that connects you, especially or talking to someone else, having fun with someone, calling someone up and laughing. Some of the most joyous ex experiences I've had are laughing with other people who have experienced the same sort of traumatic experiences. And that sounds weird, but some of the, some of this stuff, you know, when you find people who are your tribe, when I find people who are my tribe and we hang out together, there is a healing that goes on and somehow, bizarrely, we laugh at the craziest shit which has happened. And that, that's amazing. Give me more of that. Give me more people like those. Not everybody is my tribe, but when I find my tribe, there is this boom connection, this kind of, it feels like family. And that, I think that's what we're all looking for. If we can't find the connection that uh, we want with our families of origin, we find family elsewhere. For me, those of us who have experienced the scapegoat role, those people who are the black sheep of their family, when we hang out, we have a lot of fun. I personally think that scapegoats are the fun ones. Uh, yes, the crazy ones, but that's where the healing is. The more I do that, the more fun and joy and flow I find in life. If this video has been helpful and you want to see more videos like it, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon and you'll be notified of new videos. And if you are trying to escape the scapegoat role and want help with all those negative messages and the baggage you were given as a kid, then kid, that's so funny. Goats, kid, baby kid, baby goat is a kid. If you want help with that stuff, with an escaped goat plan, I do coaching as well. There's a link in the description below. Hit that and you'll find out more about it. And this is your next video on scapegoating.